Hello, everybody. Today is July 19th, 2023. And I have been counseling, as the Lord does uh, in my life, uh, unto the rest of his children in the body of Christ. And it has come up a lot and really has been over the years in general, but it's been coming up a lot about the mark of the beast, the mark of the beast, the mark of the beast. And so I have discussed privately with people uh, about what the Lord has shown in scripture to me and what he has spoken to me directly. And I'm not this, 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 this recording and this message and this post is not about me sitting down and telling you what that specific thing is or is not. That is not the point here. The point is to go over scripture and to, to once again deal with the spiritual figurative aspects of the word of God because we are spiritual beings. And Father has said in scripture that he has spoken in parables from the beginning and that it, it takes the spirit of God to reveal the things of God. And so I'm praying forth that the very spirit of God and his seven spirits that bring us into the understanding, the counsel, the wisdom of God uh, by the knowledge revealed will come forth from God and help all of us to understand what the scripture has and is really saying about the mark of the beast. Again, I am speaking less today or almost entirely not about a physical partaking, but the spiritual aspects, because sadly, we have a church that is inundated with carnal living and carnal mindedness, which what I mean by that is they are, they are facing and focusing their attention on carnal matters from a carnal perspective still. And we have got to be a people of the spirit. We have got to be a people that are ruled and are reigned by the spirit of God himself and become spiritual beings that are being led by his spirit and the mind of Christ and not the mind of the carnal created flesh nature. Because in that, we are run and ruled then by the law of sin and death, which is estrangement. Estrangement being all points and, and circumstances that are opposite of how God conducts himself. And it is led by ourselves, by the creature itself instead of by the creator. And so with this, the Lord has been sitting down with me going over scripture to which I thought was going to be just a few verses that I would put out and then I would record the horses or something beautiful for people to look at. And it became a teaching. It took on a life of itself with the spirit of God revealing these things. And one of the points and premises that he wants to make very clear is that one way to know if you're carnally minded is to be focused is that when when you're focused on being marked when someone says humans are marked or being marked do you automatically go to the mark of the beast when you think do you automatically go to that scripture and does it instill a sense of fear or dread within you about this receival of a mark from the beast system or the beast. And I say that to help you all individually point out whether you are carnally minded in this or spiritually minded because there are two marks. There are two seals. A mark is a seal. So when we say that there is a beast and a beast system and there will be people marked and sealed into that beast system, we are also saying that there are people that are marked and sealed by the Holy Spirit, and that's what scripture says. And fundamentally, as his body, if ruled by his mind, we will automatically go to 
all verses and understanding and knowledge, believing that we are marked by the Holy Spirit, we will not be inclined to when someone says marked or sealed in our foreheads that it will be pertaining to automatically going to, oh no, the beast thing again. God's children have a knowledge and understanding that they are sealed by the Holy Spirit and scripture says so. Because in that, you are spiritually minded because Christ is in you then if he's reminding you that. If he's in you and he's telling you that and you're focused on that, you are focused on Christ. You are focused by the Spirit. You are being led by the Spirit. If you are inundated, focused on the mark of the beast, 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 then you are carnally minded. You are not being led by the Holy Spirit, nor are you reinforcing uh, the wisdom of God, the godly wisdom versus the sensual wisdom of the world and the spirit thereof. And so without further uh, ado, I'm going to go into this and the difference and what he wants to point out here so that we can come out of being carnally minded in the church and step into being the body of Christ who is spiritually minded and minded on God, not minded on fear and the enemy because what we give our time and our focus to we are worshiping and if we are worshiping the enemy and we are worshiping the enemy as in the flesh itself the created being the beast itself then we are carnally minded and we are marking ourselves to be carnally minded. And we will have a system that will support that mindedness. So I want to reinforce and reiterate, we are to be spiritually minded and led by the Holy Spirit of God. And if we are led spiritually, understanding the things of the Spirit, for those who have ears and eyes to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying, we will have the head of Christ on. The head, the head, meaning the chief one, the principality. There are two princes vying for you at all times. Two principalities. The principality of the carnal and the fallen and the broken and the leadership of self unto self-preservations. Or there is the principality and the leadership of God. Principality being the chief and highest one, most high in our lives. And that would be the spirit of God. And leading us in spiritual matters to be reformed of our inner man inside and thereby being sealed and marked by the Holy Spirit who has taken possession of us. And in that we are not minded on the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast is for two people. Two types of people. One, those that don't know God whatsoever at all. They have fallen into that category because they have absolutely no knowledge of him. They don't know him. They don't walk with him. They are not same as like and become one with him in spirit. And they are they are carnal people. And the other is people who are lukewarm and know about the scripture and the truth, but do not walk it, do not become sanctified, consecrated and given their lives, a life for a life back to God. Nor are they becoming one with him to become one with someone means I attain the similitude of God again within and the similitude or likeness of God within is a certain character and conduct that he himself lives. And if he is living inside you, you will be inundated with the conviction to come into alignment with him in all areas of your life. People who don't understand that that is what salvation is. Salvation was a reconciliation. A reconciliation is a coming back together where one had to become disagreeable. And we'll see that later as the definitions roll out. So the lukewarm are saying something with their mouths and they have just enough knowledge and understanding of scripture to hang themselves carnally. Because the lukewarm actually are still worshiping the beast, the created being, the self. They do not want to come out of alignment with sin. They want to continue to walk in the law of sin and death, but yet claim that they walk in the spirit of life in Christ, the spirit of the law in Christ. 
life itself. And yet they speak these things with their lips, but their hearts are far from God. Hearts far from God means they are not in alignment like as same coming into the similitude and likeness of God. Once again, because God came in the similitude and likeness of man corruptible to take our place and to give us the opportunity to receive salvation because he wishes for none to perish. But if we do not come back into the similitude and likeness of God, giving a life for a life again, then we will remain lukewarm and under the law of sin and death operating within our hearts because we will not have the law of the spirit of the law of life itself in Christ written on our hearts. And that is why the lukewarm will be vomited out with everyone else who has absolutely no knowledge, nor affiliation or commitment unto God. Commitment unto becoming one with him. One with him is reconciliation at one mint. Christ came and blew all the stops out, all the excuses out and gave us an open door. An unlocked door. But he did say, I stand on the other side knocking and you have got to open up to me. What that means is we have to do it for real. We have to come into a relationship with him for real. He is real. We are real. That is the truth. Truth in the definition of Strong's is reality. The real reality is the truth is that we are real spiritual beings. He is a real spiritual being. We are having a carnal experience here in a physical body. He came and did the same. He came in the likeness or similitude of man. He is not man, but he came in the likeness or similitude of. So now we have to return to the likeness or similitude of God, who is a spirit being, as like we are, and we need to walk same as him again. It does not mean perfection. If we were to walk in total perfection without flaw, we would be Messiah ourselves, and we are not. We are God's children, but we are to come into the similitude of him again, which means character and conduct, righteousness in Strong's. One of the definitions is equity and equity. When you look it up in Strong says like same actions and deeds in character. So we have to be desiring to have like same deeds and character as God again. Again, we are not held to the penalty of the law or the letter of the law. He said that that brings death because we can't do that. We can't do it perfectly like him. It's why he needed to come. It's why he needed the second testament. The first one was not doing it. It wasn't achieving all that he wanted. He came. And he fulfilled the Old Testament, which is he was the lamb. He was the high priest. He came and he rocked out the law completely. He did not infraction it whatsoever. He became the Old Testament perfectly. That's why it's not done away with. He became it. So now we have the ability to live in and with the Old Testament God because all that sits on the throne in Yeshua. And we are forgiven of our trespasses, which means our sins against him, our offenses against him. We're forgiven of that. Forgiven, like the, the case is dismissed. But do not grieve the Holy Spirit. We are not to practice and walk in greasy grace, which is taking advantage of all that he is. His person who walks a certain way whilst saying, oh, no, 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 I'm not going to do that. I'm not, I don't have to give that up. I don't have to be like same as we are grieving him and causing him to come to sorrow, which we will see in definitions as well. When we decide that we are not going to come back into agreement with him, because that's reconciliation coming out of disagreement, which we will see again later in definition. So we have to come into agreement with him which is to become one with him because his children become one with him. His children reconcile. His children become sacrificial and they give up living unto self-leadership and worshiping the beast or the created being itself. And they come to worship and worship only the creator. So without further ado, we're going to go into the difference between being marked or sealed by the devil or Satan, 
or self-leadership and worshiping ourselves unto trying to save our lives, to which he said you will lose them, or if we're going to worship the creator and not the created being, and not that we can lead self and think for self and reason for self, but we're going to give all that up like Christ did, dying and taking up his cross. And walk that out with him, coming back into the similitude and likeness of God, receiving and working out that salvation and thereby being sealed or marked by the Holy Spirit. With his name, God's name written on our foreheads instead. In Strong's, these are Strong's definitions, G2226, beast. Definition, a living thing that is an animal. 2342, beast, a dangerous animal, venomous, wild beast. Definition, animal in the dictionary, a living organism typically having specialized sense organs and a nervous system and able to respond rapidly to stimuli a mammal as opposed to a fish, reptile, or an insect, a person without human attributes or civilizing influences, especially someone who is very cruel, violent, or repulsive, relating to characteristics of animals, characteristic of the physical and instinctive needs of animals of the flesh rather than the spirit or intellect. And these are the definitions in the dictionary. So first we realize that the definition of an animal or a beast, because we roll back up there and it says that it is a dangerous animal, a venomous one at that. And I think we should take note of that. It's a living thing in scripture, an animal. And so we realize that it's a living thing. It's a living organism, the beast or the creation. And it's typically having sense organs and a nervous system. So we can think, we can emote, we can feel, we can taste, and it responds to stimuli. It's a mammal as opposed to a fish, reptile, or insect. So this is a specific kind of creature that we're talking about. One that is as like a mammal um, and a human is made as like a mammal. We feed young by milk and we give birth to we give live birth opposed to eggs. And without human attributes or civilized influence, we need to take note of that because this is what I'm talking about when we worship the created thing. God is saying you are like as brute beasts, he said in scripture, did he not? Uncivilized and influential at that especially someone who is cruel, violent, or repulsive. And this would be towards other people. So again, when we walk with Christ, we're walking humbly. When we walk by the spirit of the living God, he walks humbly and sacrificially and in servitude to others, not cruelly, violently, or repulsive. This is the, this is the epitome of me and my four and no more. Relating to characteristics of living animalistic. This is why I say that the carnal, the carnal nature, the flesh nature is a base animalistic survival nature. It is characteristic of the physical, so they're going to try to save their physical, flesh, actual body, and instinctive needs of an animal. So again, um, the people who are going to receive a mark of a beast in any way, shape, or form, spiritual or literal, are going to be people trying to save their flesh, literally trying to save their skins. Of the flesh, it lives unto focusing on and worshiping the flesh. Flesh is most important. Body is most important. We must save our skins and our lives here in this material because that's all there is rather than the spirit or the intellect or wisdom of the spirit. Revelation 13, 15 through 17. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause. Okay, so now the image of the beast or the similitude and likeness of a beast creature is both going to speak and cause. Well, out of all animals or mammals, humans are the only ones that I'm aware of that can speak outright in this world and cause an action to take place. So the Antichrist that's working with this is going to be working with people 
and persons who both speak and cause actions, and they are in the similitude of the beast carnal nature, worshiping it. That as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Okay, well, let's think scripturally, spiritually figurative. If we're not going to worship the image of the beast or the created ourselves as most important, self, 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 pride, 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 the carnal base animalistic nature. If we're not going to do that and we're going to live by the lead of the spirit with the head, our principality on us being Christ, then we're going to be killed. You can take that literally. I'm not saying that people are not going to die literally, but I'm saying we have to take that spiritually, figuratively, symbolically here to get the understanding that the spirit is giving us. And that is to, be, to die to the self-led and carnal worshipped type of living. We have to die to self. And we will die to self if we are choosing not to worship the image of the beast or the likeness and similitude, the agreement of the beast as being most high. And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Again, I want to reiterate right here that this is children and rich and poor. It's everybody, everybody alike to receive a mark or a seal or a similitude and likeness of how they function in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man may buy or sell. So these are stipulations. There has to be something that went directly into the right hand. And we're going to talk symbolically as well in a minute. Right hand or forehead. And it's a mark. It's not necessarily a chip implant. It's not necessarily not. It could be a barcode. It could be a tattoo. These are things to talk to father about and that no man may, may buy or sell, save or accept he has this mark or the name of the beast, which is G2342 or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding count the number of the beast for it is the number of a man and his number is 603 score and six. All right, let's break down what is the image. That's the likeness, the profile, or the representation in resemblance. So when we go back up here and it says they would not worship the image, that's worship the profile or representation and likeness and resemblance of the beast. So we're not going to worship that. because we're going to be spiritually worshiping God. And worship here is to kiss like a dog licking the master's hand, to fawn or crouch over or to, and prostrate oneself in homage, do reverence to and adore. The only one we are supposed to adore and do reverence to is the spirit of the holy living God. We are not to do that to our carnal flesh selves, the material persons of this world. We are not to prostrate and lie down in worship to ourselves in that manner to the beast itself. We are not to fawn after ourselves. And we are not to kiss like a dog licking the master's hand. The master then would be us if we are ador adoring ourselves and giving reverence to the beast or the created itself. When Satan fell, he wished to worship himself, the created. He wished not to obey or worship or give reverence to the creator. Anybody who follows him will do the same. Mark, a scratch or etching that is stamped as a badge of servitude or sculptured figure, statue, graven image. So when we say that we are worshiping the beast, or not, depending on which category you fall into, that is the created being itself, there will be a scratched etching or a stamp. This is why I say it can be like a tattoo or something that is um, engraved in the skin, which would be like a branding. 
as a badge of servitude. So if we're going to take the mark of the beast, it would be unto serving the beast, following along with the rules and systems of this governmental system down here to try to save our carnal skins, carnal lives. That's all there is. Everything should be worshipped. The carnal should be worshipped. Life itself is this body you have. And after that, there's nothing. That's the mentality of that person. No trust in God. No trust in where they came from or where they will return to or whom. But when we serve the holy living God and we are coming into oneness with him, we're being reformed, letting him do his handiwork. We are the handiwork of the Lord and come back into the similitude and likeness of him becoming sanctified, cleaned up, scrubbed and ironed out in our conduct vessels who are consecrated unto him and only him and worshiping the creator versus the created ourselves. We will then have a badge or a mark on us of servitude to God sculpted figure or statue a graven mark so it will be engraved on a figure that will be us right hand here in in and as we speak of the right hand when it's talking about the mark of the beast the definition here is through the idea of hollowness for grasping that would be like if you make your hand in a cupped shape, there is a hollowness there for grasping. It's the hand or literally or figuratively, which would be spiritually power, especially by in Hebrewism and Hebraism, a means or an instrument. So a means of power is our power in us in preserving our lives, in buying into a system down here in the way it is to survive in the carnal flesh? Or is our power and the instrument of our salvation in Christ, in God, in the spirit realm, and in the almighty, self-existent, eternal one, Jehovah himself? Because those will be marked in their, in their power or their right hand by God. So again, I, there is a physical literal to scripture, and there is always a symbolic figurative spiritual, and we're talking about that as well. Again, another definition, there's two Greek, um, two Greek Strong's definitions back to back pertaining to right hand, and it means the right side or hand as that which usually takes right-handed side. So again, if we're speaking on the literal physical, you'll take a mark, an etching, which would be an engraving or a tattoo type thing into your right side hand. Or we need to understand that means the side which usually takes. Are we, are we takers unto ourselves to preserve our flesh carnal lives? Or are we taking to God to preserve our eternal spiritual souls and spirits with God, not loving our flesh lives or carnal suits unto death? Foreheads here in scripture that they take the mark in their right hand or foreheads is G3359, and it literally means forehead or the face. So there's a literal aspect that will take place that there will be some sort of etching there. However, the spiritual impact is you're signed on your forehead already by God or by the beast system and the Antichrist or Satan. Already spiritually with which you actually worship from your heart within forehead being where what 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 is on the the forehead is the area on the outside of us that labels what is behind it what's behind your forehead but your mind are we minded on christ or are we minded on ourselves and working with the sin and death law still in us that we don't have to reform we don't have to be in any way, shape, or form, returned back to the image or likeness and similitude of the Holy Spirit of which we came from, God being the holy entity we came from, to where we got corrupted and twisted and dirty in muck and mire and Satan scales, to which we need to get scrubbed or sanctified by the word of God, 
applying it to our lives because he said work it out which means practice it becoming consecrated to him which means i will solely serve you and only you because those people have his signature written across their foreheads they are marked by his name which there will be a definition of that as well they are marked by his name on the title bearing space of their mind on their foreheads number here they will be either marked by the name or the number a number is a reckoning a reckoned up so we are going to have a reckoning at some point which is a final judgment and right now we are being reckoned with i reckon you're either running with god or i reckon you're running with the devil it is a reckoned up and that number or name which is a name literally or figuratively an authority and or a character called plus surname so we are called we're either called by the father of the devil being our father or we are called and fathered by the holy spirit into which we will get a name or a surname written meaning this one owns us and it is by an authority and a character so we're going to find out whose name we have. And so surname here, he told me to look up. It is a name common to all members of a family. So again, which family are we running with? Who has fathered us? It is distinct from a given name, which would be like a first name, a name, title, or epithet added to a person's name. So we have our first name, and then we have another name from the family or father that we come from. That would be your last name, especially one indicating their birthplace or a particular quality or achievement. So a birthing, we have to be born again, do we not? That's because we have to die to this carnal existence being all there is and living this base animalistic nature to try and save that being estranged from the spirit of God because we're walking in perversion because we had a fall. We had a spiritual fall. So we have to be born again, which would speak of a new birthplace, birthed in Christ, or in Christ, particularly of a quality or achievement, his achievement of salvation. But we have to walk it out with him. We have to walk the paths of righteousness and work out the salvation that was given to us. And work out means practice it. And the number of the man, G444 in Strong's, it means Count the countenance man faced that is a human being a certain kind of man and six says it's the second 22nd 14th 22nd and 14th and an obsolete letter as a cross of g 47 42 of the greek alphabet denoting respectively 660 and six 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 as a numeral 603 score and six so when we read that they either have to have the name or the number we're going for that man that countenance that certain type of person is going to have either the name or the number of the beast and then and the name was back up here the character and authority of that father with a surname that's why it's that father who is fathering them it's a last name so that type of man will go by the number either that name or the number of obsolete letter which is a cross so it the cross has become obsolete to this person in their life and they are now 666 which the number three means whole or complete so this is a holy or completely carnal man 666 whole and completely carnal means focusing on saving their flesh the flesh is all there is they are carnally minded they live accordingly they lead themselves they are in pride they are the opponent of god the hostile opponent of god and spirit
The definition of obsolete is no longer produced or used, out of date. So now the spirit of God is no longer produced or used. The holiness is no longer produced or used, and they are out of alignment with God. Less developed than formerly developed. So we once came from God, and we were perfect in all our ways until iniquity was found in us as well because we fell with Satan. So we were formerly in a better developed position or state than what we are. It is now, we are now left in a rudimentary state or an animalistic base nature is what I call that. Root definition comes from Latin, which means grown old or worn out to fall into disuse. It is a sad thing when we realize that the fully carnal man will not be in alignment with God, will not be seeking to be in similitude and return to his image, being sanctified or consecrated or led by with the head of Christ on them, being the leadership in them, as they will have made the cross obsolete or it will have grown old to them, be worn out and that will fall in disuse. That means they will, they will put off the Christ, the cross of Christ. The cross, the seal. Luke 9, 23. And he said to them all, if any man will come after me, let him deny or utterly. These are the definitions in brackets of the strongs. Let him deny or utterly deny himself, disown and abstain from himself and take up his cross. I have his highlighted there because this is a specific duty of us. Him, him saying, it's your cross, yours, his cross, which cross means exposure to death, self-denial, atonement of Christ at one again. Exposure to death means death to self, death to leading yourself, death to pride, death to, the, to, to worshiping the animalistic, carnal, base, material person that is fallen. Self-denial, atonement of Christ means to be at one again, which means as like same returning to the similitude of daily, he said, and follow him and follow him in the strongs is follow the road or path to be in the same way and a company, specifically a disciple. These are the children of God. The man who will come after the Lord God himself, utterly dis, dis, deny and disown and abstain from himself and self-leadership, and will take up his own, meaning he has a responsibility, cross, which is exposure to death and self-denial, becoming at one again or aligned in spirit and conduct with God daily. Daily. Let me reiterate, daily. This is not something you do once by praying a prayer once, saying some things with your lips. And then follow God. They then follow him. They don't just do all that. They then follow him down the road or paths of righteousness in the same way and conduct, accompanying our Lord God himself, becoming specifically a disciplined one, a disciple, a student learning under him of his way. Matthew 10, 38, and he who takes not his cross or exposure to death, self-denial, atonement of Christ, and becomes one with him again and follow after him the road, the path of righteousness to be in the same way and accompaniment with him, specifically a discipled, disciplined student of his, is not worthy of him, which means deserving, suitable, or due reward. I think we should really think about that when we want to say that the spirit of the law conduct of Christ doesn't matter anymore. We can do whatever we want. It's all done and finished with Christ. We have a working out of the salvation he gave us to do, which is to be sanctified. He said, I sanctify myself for their sake. He is our example. We are to sanctify ourselves by the scrubbing of the word of God as a fuller's soap and come into alignment with him. Or we will not be deserving of him or suitable to him or do a reward. Again, this is not about you being perfect in all your ways, because then you would have been Messiah. You are not Messiah. I am not Messiah. It is, though, however, about coming back into the similitude and likeness of God and laying down a life for a life. 
He came in the sinful similitude of man when he wasn't. And so now that we are a sinful man, we need to come back into the similitude or likeness of God and return to his image. Mark 10, 21, then Jesus beholding him, loved him and said to him, there is one thing you lack, go your way and sell whatever you have and give to the poor and you shall have treasure, which means wealth in heaven, treasure in heaven, treasure in heaven, not earth, heaven, the abode of God and come take up, lift, raise, suspend and expiate sin and put it away, the cross. Exposure to death, self-denial, atonement of Christ at one again, same as like one in spirit. And follow the road, the path of righteousness to be in the same way and accompaniment of God, specifically a disciple with God, a disciplined one. Expiate, make up for guilt or sin. So he's expecting us to make up for guilt or sin because the definition of take up that's why it's important to look up the strongs. means lift, raise, suspend, and expiate sin. That means put it away. We have to put it away. We cannot walk in it knowingly. Even Paul said, if you have now come to the truth and still continue in your sin, God forbid. Because that's willful sin. That's what Paul said. So he expects us to make up for a guilt or a sin by expiating the sin, putting it away. And, and, and the root definition of expiate means to end, like rage or sorrow or whatever other sin and contrary conduct of God, by suffering it to the full. So we have to end it by suffering. He said, you will suffer in my afflictions. You will be persecuted because you're not going to work by the spirit of the world, by the spirit of the air down here, the spirit of the age that's down here. We're of a new age. We're of a different place, a different kingdom. And we're going to suffer to the full. Appeased by sacrifice, we have to live sacrificially. If we don't live sacrificially, we are living pridefully. To sacrifice is to give up things for someone else or for the benefit of something else. Pride is the opposite of that. Pride is me, my foreign, no more, and I'm going to try and save my own skin. We have to be appeased by sacrifice means out plus pious. The definition of piety means religiously reverent. Root definition from, comes from Middle English, means pity. And it comes from French and Latin, which means dutifulness. See, pious. So this is the definition of pious. Dutifully pitiful. That pitiful would be lowly and humble. And that is our duty. Save yourself, the beast, the created material. When one will not sacrifice, face death, but instead will worship the flesh, one will come down from their cross. Mark 15, 30, save or deliver, protect and preserve yourself and come down, descend figuratively or literally from the cross or exposure to death, self-denial, atonement of Christ and at one again. This is what they said to Christ while he was on the cross. Save yourself, come down from the cross. When one remains and endures their cross, they are sealed by God. John 19, 17, and he bearing or enduring, sustaining and receiving his cross, exposure to death, self-denial, atonement of Christ at one again, went forth into a place and place here, just like in Revelation when it says that the woman is going to be whisked away into the wilderness, a place where she will be nourished. When it says that, the definition of place in both of those spots here in John and there in Revelation means a spot or a condition or opportunity, a scabbard, which is a sheath for a sword. So now we realize that bearing or enduring and sustaining his cross, receiving it, not rejecting that taking place in our lives, receiving that self-denial and coming into it one minute with God again, takes us into a place or a condition and opportunity uh, to be in the scabbard of God. The scabbard of God is the sheath where the sword is. Where, who, what is the sword of the Lord? The word of God. The what, of, what is the word of God? Yeshua, the Messiah. Where are we supposed to live? 
in Messiah, in Christ. It will go forth into the place of Messiah, essentially, called the place of the skull and the cranium. Who is, who is, when it says that Christ went forth into a place called the place of a skull, which means cranium. That's the, he, what did he say? I only mind what the Father shows me and tells me to do. That's it. And so we need to remember that we're going to go into the place of the skull too. And in the place of the skull, we are either going to be minding the beast with his name and number there, or we're going to be minding Christ with the signature and the seal and the mark of the Holy Spirit there because the Holy Spirit has been upheld as high. The crea creation has been thrown down or humbled. And the creator has been put up in his place as most high within, which is called in the Hebrew Golgotha or the skull. We need to really think about that. And the definition of endure here in, in the um, dictionary is suffer something painful or difficult patiently last through. Root definition comes from a Middle English and French, uh, which means harden in plus hard. So hardened which means resolute and determined, unwavering and single-minded. We have to have that single eye. Christ told us that. That's the perspective of God. Matthew 24, 13, but he who shall endure or stay under and remain, undergo, bear up in trials, have fortitude to preserve to the end, set limit, conclusion of the actions or state, termination of, result and purpose, the same shall be saved or delivered, protected, preserved, do well, and made whole. So we have a process here. We have to endure to the end, he said. And if you endure to the end, then the same person will be saved. Okay, that's the gist of it. But what we, we, we really see when this breaks down is that the one who endures will stay under and remain undergoing the trials, bearing up under them, having fortitude. That is that, that re resolute character to, to stick it out and persevere persevere to the end to the end of what the set limit or the conclusion of that action and state that the God, lord god has us dealing with and on and undergoing until the termination of it or the result and the purpose is fulfilled of it and the same person will be saved or delivered protected preserved do well and made whole in the end of that so we have got to bear up in this world under what he's going to put us through in our refinement process he is the refiner and he is fire and he's going to consume anything in our lives that is not like same as him because the goal is to return you to his similitude or image. First Corinthians 118 for the preaching of the cross or the exposure to death, self-denial, atonement of Christ at one again is to them who perish or are destroyed fully and lost. Are we not? Are we not trying to seek the lost that none should perish? So the people that are lost inside their minds and understanding of that reprobate mind, all of this cross talk, exposure to death and all that is to them who perish. It's foolish. It's silliness and it's absurdity. And that's what you will hear from carnal people who are even in the church, the lukewarm, who are like, that's ridiculous. You've got to go into the system of and then fill it in. Uh, the medical system, the FDA, I mean, whatever you want to go into down here, that's how you survive. That's how you live. The doctors say this, the government people say that, okay? It's foolishness to live according to the spirit of God, which is contrary to this world. Contrary means opposite of. But unto us who are saved or delivered, protected, preserved, and do well and made whole with God, it is the power or miracle itself, the ability and abundance of God, the supreme divinity and magistrate. So here it's saying to us, it's not silliness to live by the spirit or the supreme divinity and judge, the high judge. He is a miracle and the power thereof, the ability and abundance of God itself is not foolishness to us. And by that, we live unto him and are saved. But to everybody else, it's foolishness. You got to save the carnal flesh nature. You got to save your lives and your skins down here. That is the state of the man who believes in the beast system and worshiping the beast, which is saving the beast's life unto all costs. Ephesians 2.16 and that he might reconcile, which means restore relations, make one consistent with the other, settle a disagreement. Root means bring back together. And that he might reconcile both man and himself unto God, 
in one body. And body here in Strong's means a sound whole. By the cross or exposure to death, self-denial, atonement of Christ, and becoming one again at one minute. Having slain or outright destroyed the enmity, which is hostile opposition, that would be the carnal flesh nature and leading self, thereby, and came and preached peace, which means joining. Peace means joining and set it one again. So here we have the at one minute in same like similitude once again, quiet and at rest to you who were, were afar off at a very far distance, way off from him in similitude and likeness, etc., and so on spiritually, and to whom were nigh, or squeezed and throttled near at hand and readied. Squeezed and throttled, what did he say? I chasten and scourge every son that I receive. Hmm. We need to think about that. And the word sound here, when we go back to in one body, so because people want to quote in one body, body, body all the time, it means a sound whole. What is sound? We know what whole is. Sound, in a good condition, not damaged, diseased, or injured, good reasoning, sense, or judgment. It also means a narrow stretch of water, a straight. Root definition comes from Middle English and Old Norse, meaning swimming a straight. And in Matthew 7, 14, he said, because straight, which means narrow, from obstacles standing close around about us, is the gate or entrance, and narrow, crowded, afflicted, and thronged in suffering of tribulation and trouble, is the way we will go on the road of righteousness, progress, route of actions, or distance, mode and means of the journey here with God, which leads or takes off and puts to death. That would be the leadership of self leadership of worshiping the beast itself, the created being unto life. That's how you gain your life with Christ. Because it, he did say, once again, I'm going to reiterate, we are now under the spirit of the law of life. We have to come out of this worshiping self, the beast, self-leadership, saving our skins down here, carnally minded, animalistic base nature to come into life, which is found in Christ. It said, the spirit of the law of life in Christ. And few or puny in number there will be who find it. And find here means obtain and perceive it. You have to you have to not only obtain obtain life through Christ and the reality of what that really means, but you have to be able to perceive what he's talking about and that's a spiritual aspect that there's going to be a lot of obstacles standing all around us in this life it's going to be a squeezed straight that we got to go through like the straits of gibraltar and that entrance into the kingdom that is christ the door himself is very narrow it's crowded it is afflicted it is thronged or chastened and scourged there are sufferings and tribulation in this world and trouble we will go through while we follow him and really return to his image because the world's going to hate you then the spirit thereof, the spirit of this age, the spirit of the air down here is going to hate you. It is the way of the road of righteousness, the progress route, the actions or distance and the mode and means of journey. So we are required to be doing some things down here, working out our salvation, coming into the similitude of Christ again. These are led by the spirit of God. And that leads and puts off death. And it leads unto life. And there's few or puny number of people who will actually perceive the truth of that and obtain it, life in Christ. Philippians 2, 7 through 8, but made, emptied, abased, neutralized of no effect himself. And he's talking about Christ here, of no reputation, which means the same. He emptied himself, abased himself, and neutralized himself of no effect, like no power of his own deciding. And took upon himself, got a hold of, offered himself in the form or adjusted parts of shape and nature of a servant, a slave, and subject subserviently in bonds. You know, Jamie Walden came out with, and I posted this yesterday on my Facebook wall, Jamie Walden on YouTube has a channel and he has one called, called Surrender or, um, or Submission. And it's like tap out something. So if you look that up and the difference between it, the, the scripture never tells you to surrender. We have all these songs, surrender all, blah, blah, blah. No, it's not surrender. Surrender is an opponent who bows their will to another. Every knee and tongue will bow, even the devil. But to be subject to and subservient in submission to God means your heart 
bowed as well as your will. He was, and that's what Christ did to the Father. He was made or caused to become assembled to be like, here's the assimilitude again, in the likeness or the resemblance and similitude of man. So God, who is holy, who never sinned, who is the exact opposite of Satan, which we've been walking in his image, came down here and came in the likeness of us to take on everything that he didn't do. Everything in our image that is like Satan to, to open the door for us to be able to reconcile back to the Father again by living the conduct of God perfectly in this earth and then saying that anybody who finds their life in him will be forgiven of all of that as well. Key being, you have to find your life in him. Life itself has to be found in Christ to come out of death and sin. And be found or perceived in a fashion a figure and circumstances of external condition as a man. He humbled, which means depressed down, humiliated in condition of heart, abased and brought himself low. That's what we have to do unto God too. And became obedient, which means attentively listening to in submission. There it is again, submission obedience and submission. That's how we fell in the garden. We became disobedient and rebellious to what God's lead was and his counsels. He's fathering us. We decided we could do this in reason for ourselves and we could worship the created being ourselves. We wanted to be like God, just like Satan. That's what we were tempted with. That's what we walk in. That's what we got to come out of by, by what? Even unto death or to the death even unto the death or, or uh, literal or figurative spiritual. So it's this spiritual leadership of self of the cross, exposing ourselves to the death of self-denial, atonement with Christ coming at one again with him, which means to have now become one in agreement, coming out of disagreement and like as same in similitude again. Those, are his, those who are his are already marked by the seal of God. They have made the spiritual pilgrimage with him, returned home to him inside again, and have become one with his spirit. And in this, they are already sealed. These are not marked with the beast or carnality. They are marked with the spirit and life already. The law of sin and death does not function in them any longer, but they operate by the lead of the Holy Spirit and are coming into his similitude again, his image, and walk not the paths of unrighteousness any longer. These know of the system of the beast created worship, and these will not love their carnal self lives so much as to save them through the worship of the flesh or the beast or the systems put in place to save the beast creature or flesh, nor receive anything into themselves to do so. These are those who are first spiritually marked by God, sealed and preserved, for it is his very spirit that indwells them, conforms them, and leads them. These know where they are heading and who is inside living with them, leading them home now and enduring who is faithful to his children. These are spiritually sealed and marked by God within because God is most high within them already. These will not worship the beast, the flesh, and preserving it to save their carnal material lives. These know from dust they came and to dust they will return. These have undergone the transformation process of sanctification and consecration. These worked out their salvation with their God. These have his laws written on their hearts and serve only him. These are his children. 2 Corinthians 6.18 and will be a father or a parent unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, which means kinship, says the Lord Almighty. John 6, 27, labor not for the meat which perishes. That would be the sustenance, what, what keeps us uh, ab afloat. Labor not for the meat which perishes. That would be the temporal things of this material carnal world. Don't buy into this is your only existence down here and you have to preserve it at all costs because it's not. We're spiritual beings. This is, this is but a simulation uh, of, of choose now whom you're going to serve for eternity. Self or God. 
but for that meat which endures unto everlasting life, and life is only found in Christ, which the Son of Man shall give unto you for him, that person, God the Father has sealed. 2 Corinthians 1, 21 through 22. Now he who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us is God, who has also sealed us and given the earnestness of the Spirit in our hearts. Revelation 7, 3 through 4, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. Again, that would be, we have the mind of Christ or no? Do we have the mind, are we minding ourselves or minding Christ? And I heard the number of them who were sealed, and there were sealed 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Revelation 9, 4, and it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men who had not the seal of God in their foreheads. Revelation 14, 1, and I looked and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion and with him 144,000 having his father's name written in their foreheads. First, we will walk as lambs to the slaughtering of the flesh or beast and cease worshiping it, the beast the, or the creation itself. This is what I'm going to take a second here and tell us. This is what Christ did when he laid his life down as a lamb sacrificed and he went through a slaughtering. We too will go through a slaughtering. He literally laid down the created part of, part, part of what he came as. He took on a similitude of man. It said a similitude, a likeness that would be flesh. So he laid that flesh down. So if we're going to look at that symbolically and figuratively, spiritually as well, we've got to lay that down and not worship it. It is not the most important thing. What our flesh goes through and, 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 and serving it and giving it everything it wants, like a spoiled little child down here. It is more important to, to walk preserving the spirit and the soul of us unto obedience and submission to the spirit of God. And because that's our eternal part, this flesh is carnal, meaning that it's, it's, it's temporal. It's going to go back to dust and we will only worship the creator, the pride of life and the flesh will be slaughtered, laid down, submitted to the spirit and then we will become living sacrifices unto our God and Father. Then we will walk in dominion with him as the lion. First, the slaughtering and tagging us like livestock with his seal and mark. Then we will walk in dominion inside and out in this realm and all other realms with him. Manifested Romans 8, sons of God, a clean and spotless bride who is wrinkle free as she has been ironed out in her conduct, becoming one as like with her God, father and bridegroom once again, returning to his image within. Revelation 22, 4, and they shall see his face and his name shall be in their foreheads. Ephesians 1, 13 and 14, in whom you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnestness, which means pledge and security and rest of our inheritance. So the Holy Spirit is the promise of our pledge, security and rest. We can rest in, in our inheritance with and through him, which means our heirship, our patrimony and possession, taking possession with God in the spirit uh, realm in heaven, in the kingdom, until the redemption or until the deliverance of the purchased possession, this peculiar pur purchased preservation, that's us, until the purchased possession of us unto the praise and his glory. Ephesians 4.30, and grieve or distress with heaviness and make sorry, not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed or stamped with a signet, a private mark for security or preservation to attest for and set up unto the day of redemption, the act of ransom in full salvation and deliverance. First Peter 1, 3 through 5, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has, got, be, has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection 
of Jesus Christ from the dead. We will be resurrected from a dead sin and rebellion estrangement walk as well within and be resurrected into life with Christ. If we are of Father, God, Holy children and family unto an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that fades not away and is reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. And the two shall become one flesh, Genesis 2, 24. And that is what Father had given me today to discuss about, uh, are we more concerned with the mark of the beast than the mark of the Holy Spirit? Because then we need to understand we're carnally minded and we're in fear. We need to be focusing on God's family has already been warned about a mark of a beast in the physical. But do we understand by the lead and the anointing of the seven spirits of God with their with the presence of the Lord being first, the spirit of the Lord being there first, the fear of the Lord being there last and capping wisdom, counsel, knowledge, understanding and the power behind that. Because if we walk with God, we will understand spiritually that we're marked already by our hearts and our conduct of whether or not the spirit of God's laws are written on our heart. And if they're written on our heart, that means that you be living that way. Your heart is the true person of you in soul conduct, meaning your mind, your choices, so your thinking, your reasoning, your intellect, and your choices of your will, what you're going to do and what you're not going to do, and the emotional status of how you operate is all going to be revolving around God, God's kingdom, God's conduct, his spirit, his leading. Those people are not minded on the carnal anymore. They're slaying the carnal left, right, and center daily, he said, daily taking up your cross of self-denial to exalt God within. Those people are not, they're not even concerned that they're going to take the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast is for people who do not come from the kingdom of God. The mark of the beast is for those who actually don't know him whatsoever for real, spiritually speaking, because he's a spirit. They know him in a carnal sense from a twisted and perverted, uh, sensual devilish wisdom from down here, it says. They can quote scripture, but they can't live it. They can teach the truth, but they don't walk it out. They don't know him. Depart from me. Whoa, 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 whoa. I served you my whole life and I cast out demons and I was in the ministry and I, I led Bible study and I, or, I, or I, was, I was a worship leader. I don't know you. Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. They worked lawlessness. People want to talk about how the law, it doesn't, it, there's no law or conduct anymore that we have to come back into similitude of. Yes, we do. Christ, in Christ. Christ conducts himself a certain way. And if he's in you and you in him, you will conduct yourself as like Christ. You will desire to. You won't even desire to follow the sin, cardinal, fallen nature that leads you into estrangement and rebellion, being disobedient against, against God in his way. You won't even want to do that anymore. You'll want to kill that. We have got to be minded that there is a process here that God is bringing us into, which is getting cleaned up and sanctified by the word of God, coming into the likeness of God again, coming into reconciliation. The whole purpose of salvation was to reconcile us to God, period, hands down. Reconcile means to come into agreement with him again, as like same. Righteousness, the definition of righteousness in the Strongs is to walk out the equity which means equal to in character and actions. He's not looking for us to be uh, completely without error. That's why he had to come. I mean, that's clear to everybody who knows him. But if you know him and he's in you, he will be leading you in how your ways are conducted because he leads himself because he's not from a kingdom of lawlessness, which is why the people will depart, uh, will be departed from him and estranged from him forever in, in, in a lake of fire because they would not go through the fire now. They would not go through the voluntary refining process. I mean, voluntary, meaning you submitted to it. You didn't surrender. You didn't just bow your will like, oh, he's more powerful than me and stronger, and I got to do this out of duty. That stuff gets burned up. 
but you bowed your heart. You allowed him to write his law of con how he conducts himself all over you. And you desire to know him and you desire to be as like him. And he's working that out in you as he refines you. Those people are already marked by him. Those people are becoming like same and one in spirit with him. This is why the lukewarm will get vomited out in the end. Because they will have bought into a man's doctrine and dictate. Doctrines of devils and man's precepts down here, they will have bought into religion and they won't have really worked it out in their heart in a real relationship with God, allowing him to do the work, allowing him to, to uh, conform and refine his handiwork to do to finish the good work. They will have looked as if they went through all the steps of religion. I did this, this and this. Notice that they said, I did this, this and this in your name. And he's like, I didn't know you because it wasn't God doing those things with the person, through the person, in alignment with and leading them. It was they did all those things. Do we see that? They worshiped the beast. This is why they will be cast out. And he says they will be cast out into utter darkness with wailing and gnashing of teeth. Just as like the one who thought he was going to get into the wedding, but he did not have his garment, the right garment on. There is a robe of righteousness and it's Christ's. And righteousness is to walk in definition. One of the parts of the definition in Strong is to walk in equity with Christ, which is equal and same in character and actions. This is the child of God who is marked. This is the child of God who is sealed by the Holy Spirit, and he will finish the good work he started in them. We just have to agree and we have to do the work, but he will finish the good work he started in those kids. And they, they loved not their lives unto the death of self and beast worship. This is why his true children are not concerned about taking some kind of thing to save their lives down here. You got to do this, this, and this, and you got to get marked in your right hand and your forehead and save your life down here. Because now the only food we have is the food we're providing to you from the government. Now the only water source you have is this. And then you're subject to whatever that is, good for you or not. But his kids walk by faith. You can't even please him without faith. His kids walk spiritually and they walk by faith, which is, listen, you can be Pharaoh on my butt pursuing me up against a brick wall of a Red Sea and my God will still make a way to preserve me. And in that he'll crush you likewise. That is a different caliber person. And we need to understand that that's the person Christ resides in. Bringing that person into the understanding of all this to walk spiritually with him and to love not this carnal existence, this material existence of fallenness at that, us broken existence materially, not to love that more than allowing God to be the leader in us and reform us in our ways. Because the person who is, there's going to be a lot of people in this world who are going to try to save their skins. They're going to try and save their lives, what they perceive as their life down here. And this is, a, this is temporal. The body is temporal. It's temporary. This existence is temporary. Everything you can attain here is going to burn, he says. It's all going to burn up in the end. But the thing that shouldn't burn up forever in the end is your eternal soul and your spirit. Those need to be worked on now. Those need to be refined now. Those need to come into the image and the saving and working out of the salvation of Christ now. Being fathered by the Father in his ways, raised up in the way, and not depart from it when we're older, period. Because we're going to burn one way or another. You're either going to burn right now in the refiner's fire being reformed inside or you'll face the fire later. One is temporal. One is for 80 years. The other is eternity. And the reason there's gnashing of teeth and wailing is because those people are going to be like, no, 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 no. Don't cast me away forever. No, 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 no. And they're going to be estranged from God, never knowing love again, never knowing kindness, gentleness, none of that ever again. We're going to burn one way or another, folks. You're either going to become the all-consuming fire with God that walks this earth in signs, miracles, and wonders unto a perverse generation, pulling them out of the world and into God's family in a great harvest. 
pulling them out of the fires of destruction into the holy living fire. We're either going to walk with fire now and assimilate into being the all-consuming fire with God, which is the all-consuming holiness against an unholy world and way and the spirits thereof. Or we're going to burn in what I, what he has explained to me, burn in a lake of fire, which he explained to me is really they're going to be exposed to my full person of holiness and I'm an all-consuming fire and they're going to be exposed to that for all of eternity as choosing to uphold unholiness, as choosing to uphold disobedience, rebellion against me, being contrary and a hostile enemy to me. They chose to uphold the beast nature. Folks, I really hope this is driven home. I really hope we get the understanding of this today. And I really hope you understand that by doing real relationship with God, that's all that's required. But by doing real relationship, you're going to be exercising and practicing, he said, practicing your salvation. What is our salvation? What were you saved from? Disobedience, sin, rebellion, being a hostile and contrary enemy to God walking opposite of him. We were walking paths of unrighteousness, which would mean not equal to him in equity of character and actions. So working out your salvation is to come into the paths of righteousness, the ancient paths, and walk out your salvation. Walk out that equity that you were given. Walk out that Christ. Walk out that Holy Spirit you were given and practice it and exercise the like same character and actions of God. And in that, you will not even remotely be taking on a mark of a beast. You will be marked and sealed by the holy living God. And Father, I pray that you bring us all into the understanding of that. And I and I ask of you to thank the Son. Please thank Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ, for all that he has given us of the gift of salvation. And thank I thank your Holy Spirit. I thank your Holy Spirit for walking with us daily, being grieved by us daily, and by teaching us and trying to pull us into the truth, all truth. That is the Holy Spirit's job all day every day, never turning from us, never forsaking us, and even in our filth, as we work and effort with you to scrub our garments clean, and then to get ironed out as well in our conduct, so that we have the proper garment when we enter in, so that we take the robe, we take the mantle that your son draped over us. We've been given the righteousness of Christ, the robe of righteousness of Christ. We are mantled by God. May we walk worthy of that mantle in truth and in spirit. In Jesus' holy and precious name.